In today's OpenGL demo, I'm showing off how I added chunk loading and unloading to my voxel engine game. So as you can see here, we have this world and it's eight chunks by eight chunks by eight chunks. And each chunk at Y0 is this staircase pattern of grass. And each chunk below it is a stone chunk and each chunk above it is a regular chunk. And if we fly in any particular direction, you'll see that the terrain loads in in front of us. And as we fly in any direction, the terrain behind us deletes. So the way we do this is in our world class, we first have two extra threads. We don't all run it on the main thread. We have two separate threads we have. We have a thread for chunk threading and mesh threading. So, and we call this function in, when we create a world, which is just like a singleton class, and then we stop threading once we delete it, which just joins the threads back together. So in our chunk thread, we check if we need to load a chunk, then we update chunks and we set this to false. And we set update chunk boolean to true whenever we move our player into another chunk. So whenever we update position, we call this, and then this thread will pick it up. And these are all atomic bools down here. So it is automatically synchronized and it doesn't run into errors with accessing data. And then in our update function, an unordered set of new chunks, then we have this 3D for loop that iterates X, Y, and Z from player location minus render distance to player location plus render distance for all three of them. And we create a new chunk, we ins or we create a new position at that location. We insert it to new chunks. And then if we cannot find it in our loaded chunks, then we add the chunk, which calls the constructor of our chunk class. And then we load, we add that to loaded chunks. Then we iterate through all of our loaded chunks. And if one of them is not, and if any of them are not found in this new chunks, then we delete them. So we start off at zero, zero, zero. And if we move two to plus two X, then all the chunks that were negative seven and eight get deleted. And then chunks at plus seven and plus eight are added, but we do not add their mesh data yet, which is this setup visible. So we only call that if we set that to be true, but we set it to be false. And the reason we do this is because I'm not sure how you do it, but at least for me, whenever I added OpenGL functions to side threads, they just never worked. So we add all the chunks and we, as we can see later, we do all the calculations for setting up the mesh, but we do the final few OpenGL calls on the main thread. So we can see this down here after we, we reset. So we set new chunks equal to loaded chunks and we say update safe world data. And then for our other thread we have, which is mesh threading, we call this function, which it's the same thing from render distance to positive render distance from negative positive. We create a mesh load, which is player location plus that. So it's the same up there, but this time we create a unique lock on world data mutex, which is a shared mutex. So that locks the data so that, well, that threads accessing it, no other thread can access it. So you don't get weird errors. And once we have this lock, if that world data is not a null pointer and we should set up its mesh, which is a function in chunk, which basically says, does it not have a mesh and its calculations are done and the six chunks around it are loaded. And if all that's true, we calc vis visible block threads. And what this does is in our normal set of visibility, set up visible blocks, we call calc visible block threads and then after th calc thread. So what set up visible, where is it right here? This one, what calc visible block threads does is it gets each chunk next to it. And then it iterates through this big for loop for every block and adds each face that is exposed to this translations vector. And then in our function after that, in our after calc thread, we generate a 
VBO, VBO, and an instance VBO. We bind the buffer data based on translation.size, and we pass in the data that we got there, and then we said has mesh to true. So normally we do that if it's all on the main thread, we would have all done that all at once. We create the chunk, we calculate all of its vertices, and then we would add those to the buffers so that they can later be drawn down here. But since we're working with multiple threads, we break that up into two parts. So we have one thread entirely dedicated to just calculating visible block threads. And then once that's done, it sets this variable calc done to be true. And then in our draw call, when we draw chunks, which down here in our update chunks, we would say update safe world data set to true. So what this does is it checks is update safe world true, which means have we actually changed world data and we can get a, a lock to world data. If both of these are true, we have this secondary unordered map. So we have this unordered map of safe world chunks and of world data. So if safe world data or if world data is free and we've updated the chunks, we clear safe world data, and then we set all the values of world data to safe world data. But in the process, if it's calc done, if the value is calc done, which means all the math is done and all the calculations are done, you just have to run the final like eight OpenGL functions. We simply run those before passing it into safe world data. Then we unlock it, set that variable to false, and then after that, for each value in safe world data, we draw it to the screen. So what this setup lets us do is that when we're running the game, the main thread keeps a consistent FPS no matter how many chunks are loading. But as we move around, the other two threads will pick up and start generating chunks and start deleting chunks and start processing the mesh for chunks without any noticeable lag. So we can like fly between these chunks and we see we get no errors, but once the functions are done, they start generating in chunks for us, which allows us to have smooth gameplay while actually loading in the world. And if you wanna see how the rest of this project works that we didn't cover in this video, you should click on this video here, which is part one that explains all that. And until next time, see ya.